Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're continuing on with our transfer talk. This time we are on to Shamrock Rovers. I'm joined by Ryan Legu, who's a match day contributor for Shamrock Rovers and big time Shamrock Rovers fan. And Gary Parsons from Tales of the East End podcast. Um, make sure you check out the podcast, which you can get on. Uh, every podcast platform there is, I think. Nearly we're getting Spotify this year as well. Um, Open at down. East End Pod on Twitter. Tales of the East End is our Instagram. Roy Paris is our Facebook and any podcast platform we can get us on just Google us absolutely check them out because they do great work um, not just for themselves but they do great work with the club and stuff like that as well promoting Shamrock Rovers all around especially yourself so fair play um, and thanks for joining me today so we'll get into it then with your transfers I'm sure you're like probably still parting from the FAI Cup final but anyway uh, the, the ins so far there's only been two ins but there's been a lot of re-signed uh, that were fairly important to you so Liam Scales from UCD who's very highly rated and with the Ireland under 21s as well and then Reese Marshall from Glen Avon or Glen Avon if you're rather whatever you want to call it um, what is your kind of thoughts on that Ryan uh, in terms of your aims we'll, we'll come to the out and the resound in a sec yeah well I mean I think Marshall's definitely an upgrade on what was previously there and I think Scales will Scales definitely had good competition to the likes of Pico and Grace at the back and even even Joey, so you can never have enough players mm-hmm. in the back. Because, I mean, I think you saw that last season if we were down a couple of bodies, whether it's due injury or suspension, our back line was kind of stretched a bit. I think you probably saw that at Dundalk away in April. So. Yeah, with James Furlong. Yeah, yeah, so and the fact that you can never have too many players in the same But position. he can actually play left full as well. He played left yeah, full for the twenty one. Yeah, so, no, it's all good. And um, so it's still, still another month ago before the first game, so you'd imagine there'll probably be more additions in the meantime too. Yeah, yeah, and you're obviously going in the meantime, so don't think that the, the window is shut or anything. Gary, how are you? Yeah, no, I agree with Ryan. And as regards to Liam Scales, it's the type of football player that we want to Shamrock Rovers. He's a footballer in centre half who can play all across the back floor, back floor, back four. And um, with Reese Marshall, I've heard nothing but fantastic reports about this guy. And if you look at his stats, you can find on Rovers where the guy is, is Mr. Consistent. Over 40 assists, I mean, nearly 300 appearances at the age of 24 or 25. It's, it's our type of player, once again, a footballer. It's a place where we've struggled. <clears throat> Roy Full, I mean, like exactly what Ryan said, we did struggle at the back at times. You can never have too many bodies in And he can play in the middle of the park as well, which is a versatile player coming in. And it's, it's all about trimming the fat now at this stage. I mean, we're just going to look at our outs. With Sean Boyle, yeah, go straight into it, yeah. uh, Sam Bowen, Ethan Boyle, Graham Cummins, and Orhan Voyage. See, the thing is, with a couple like Sean Boyd was unfortunate in my, yes. in my view. I mean, he started he started on fire at, at Rovers. I mean, his goal against Balls, the little one two with, with Gary Shaw, we remember that forever. Yeah. And then he went on to have a really good season, got injured, and just couldn't get back into the team, got injured again, and couldn't get going. Sam Bowen, I mean, he got in, he was a good player, he just never really kind of. Kick, took off, kicked, kicked on. He just needed game time more yeah. than anything else. And he just he was never really going to get the Rovers, but um, Eden Boyle went to Linfield. Um, <laughs> Graham Cummins <laughs> never really kicked on, but Graham or Hand Voyage, we can't judge him as a player. Personally, I think it'd be very unfair. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm still dying, lads. Um, you can't judge him as a player. He he got a, a flick off his his left instep against Waterford in the first game of the season. Scored against Dundalk. I think we saw him play for for how long? For like that. Did he get a penalty? Sixty, 60 minutes. Yeah, sixty for, minutes for Rovers as well. He was scary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, I think I mean the one thing that stands out with Voyage was we were, I remember that game I mentioned against Dundalk. We were down a few bodies. He was on the bench that night. He came on for about 10, 15 minutes, sit quite well, put himself about, got a good goal, good yeah. finish. Mm-hmm. Then we were playing Pats on the Monday and he got about three minutes at the end. So he just I don't think he was ever in the plan. So but again, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Maybe. Training might mightn't have applied themselves. He could have been door and training. Yeah. He could have had a bad attitude. You don't know. We we don't know. We can't. We still can't judge him as a player because we just, haven't seen just, him just play. Took a gamble that didn't, didn't pay off. Took a gamble that didn't pay off. I mean, we've taken plenty of gambles and they've been brilliant before. Like, yeah. I mean, look at Jack Bourne. Jack Bourne was a gamble to bring him home. I think any transfer but, these days is a gamble. Regardless. Yeah, Borky as well. All these yeah. these kind of high profile players that you can you, we take a chance on the mould and and bring home and try and nurture. They have worked. Some haven't. And, and just that's pretty much just it. on just on Graham Burke, um, what what's the deal with him? I know he's on loan. So when does that loan expire? I think it's June July. Is, is it June July? Yeah, but I and mean, is there no contract then? Is he? No, no he still has another year or two to go. Mm-hmm. Preston, but I don't think he, I don't think he's in their plans going forward. So no, I don't think he wants to go. No, back I don't think he wants to either. So I mean, I think he's probably ours now to stay. Just it's more about just kind of 
technically on loan till June or whatever, and then yeah. take it from there. All right, so I was just trying to get my head around because uh, obviously the the transfer window in our season obviously over tracks with the with the, the Premier League and or, sorry with the Championship. Um, but onto your visa indent, um, Aaron Green, who finished the season very, very strong. Yeah. yeah, can we just say that like everybody seems to think we need a striker. We do need a striker as backup. But Aaron Green was fantastic, and he was up there for Player of the Year last year. Yeah. 15 goals overall last year. His work rate's phenomenal. The guy can run for days, and he brings so much more to the game. Yeah, and, and I think only if you watch his team consistently, you know and you appreciate that type of player. Is he drops deep and he brings up midfielders into the game? He was brilliant last time. When you when you look at Jack Byrne and especially on social media, they all seem to love him. Like they, they, they would have struggled without him. Aaron because I mean, if you look at from what we did see from Or Orhan Vahoyich Oki, he did like to kind of go in behind defenders, whereas Green is going to hold it up and bring other players in, and that's our game. That's how we play. So. Like Greener was a big show of player of the year last year. I think 15 goals overall is brilliant. Himself and probably Pico were unlucky that Jack was there because Jack was obviously yeah. going to up the player. Pico had the season of, yeah. his, of his life. And you have to so, remember as well, like there was a lot of question marks when we brought Green, got Greener back to the club as well. Loads didn't want him back, you know. Huge, huge question marks, wasn't yeah. it? Because it's, yeah, it's no last, last time. No, all names mentioned. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, Certain Rovers fans yeah. from Body Fairman. But, but in terms of, uh, I, I thought Aaron Green, um, he scored that really. Uh, Oh, it, was cra- it was a cracker in Europe yeah. scored like a- I found that I thought he really kicked on to the his goal score uh, he-, he really went on a good run then and he, he actually uh, he's- you mentioned the doc up there um, did he get player of the month that year? That's- I think he got player of the month that month possibly he definitely got player of the month in one of them I yeah. can't remember now but either Rovers or the official and he was he was top class he got I think he got the Rovers one I don't think he ever got the the, uh, the sports or yeah. his, uh, one but um, I was going to say the after he kind of he kicked on there, I remember him scoring against Dundalk. I know it was the game that effectively Dundalk won the league, or but he was brilliant in that game as well. I thought he really just I thought in terms of because I've been watching from the start to the end, and he's just for me finished the season really and strong. Well I think goals. he got eleven goals from open play compared to Bahia in six as well. So again, like he's, I think the time did he finish the third top scorer? Yeah. Like so if you're looking at like if if. Usually our goal scorer takes our penalties and they're free, he it's free, but he doesn't. Like if he had been taking our penalties, which Aaron McInef was, McInef probably would have had a, a lot more goals because he got injured. But if he had taken penalties, he could have hit twenty easy. So that's what you're looking at. But I'd be, I'd be totally happy if we had Green starting up top. But we do need to bring oh, someone yeah. else. Because we're looking at we've got Dean Williams and Thomas Lewis. Dean Williams is going to be spearheading the B team, I think. Yeah, and a little could possibly go out on loan either or the only thing is with Dean as well like, I mean he's, he's done it under 17s under 19s and first division so you can argue he deserves a chance he deserves, yeah, I, think, I, I think he will get one at some stage mm. but yeah you're probably looking at the likes of Dean Thomas and Sean Callum probably in the B team yeah I'd love to see that anyways and then, so yeah uh, Lua as well he, he finished the season strong and he was getting a bit of a look in yeah. Do you know what I mean? He set, he set up a couple of goals and he's he's a, yeah he's scoring his water for Dean he set up one late on though against someone as well I remember but he's a bit raw, I think that's what it is. But the B team is perfect for that type of thing. And if we're going to talk about the B team before, I don't know, I don't know if you want to talk about it now, we can talk about it quickly. But the, the I, was going to, I was going to come on to we go through the, the we'll go through, the, we'll go through that, yeah. yeah. But who else we got? We've got Graham Bork, as we spoke about, is uh, is going to be with us until June. I think hopefully he'll be with us after it. In the ball semi, he had gotten a bit of a, he gotten a bit of stick. Not, 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 it wasn't unfair, but he, he hadn't been performing really. And I mean, it wasn't it wasn't day to day. It wasn't long today, and it wasn't a corner. So no, it wasn't a very I think that summed it up. But Bork, when he came back, it was such just the excitement around the club was huge. Because Bork and Bourne are thinking, how are you going to fit these two together? And our big problem was, we thought, how are they going to fit? In? And it, it did take a while. It took a while to jail, didn't it? Did work eventually? Yeah, it took. A, it's it's like we have two luxury players in there now. It's like two Rolls Royces, and they kind of. They, do, they just do their thing, you know, because Bork, that's what Bork did at first initially and what got him to move the Preston was he was just that luxury player who kind of floated in from the right or the left and scored these crackers and then Bourne became that guy and now we've got both so we finally accommodated them both because we've got a lot of workhorses in the middle we've Mac and Nephew, we've O'Neill move on to the likes of Gary O'Neill who is he was a revelation he like was I remember I remember we signed O'Neill alongside Farouz and Myself included, the majority of us were just excited. We signed for Asia. We're kind of like, do we need O'Neill? But, jeez, I mean, he's gotten the, in his first few months, the club's gotten the winner in Europe. 
some really impressive performances in the league and then on top of that by scoring the winning penalty in the final like, I mean, it's just been brilliant few I think he's going to go on to be a really important player I Definitely, mean yeah. he took over from Greg Balger in the final if I'm, if I'm yeah. not mistaken that was the big decision that was the yeah. biggest that was Balger, Balger had a very good season but I I mean, it's, I mean, he was a player the team, season. team of the year I went with Greg but the stars, mm-hmm. when we did a kind of halfway through the season I had him as my midfielder yeah. uh, Balger and that's obviously when um, O'Neill signed yeah uh, he was top class for the first half of the season mate. And, and even in the final itself if you could have a man of the extra time Match like that type of thing. He was he was fantastic at the thirty yeah. minutes when he came yeah, on. If you remember then in two thousand seventeen, he did the exact same thing for Cork as yeah. well. He came on and changed the game. For him. But with Gary O'Neill, when he forced the rules, I I not, didn't know much about him because he didn't he never really stood out against Rovers. But when he came in, he just immediately looked so calm, collected, and cool. He's got that. That's a crazy comparison, but he's got that kind of Perlo esque style about him where he can stroke the ball around that ease. I'm not saying he's Perlo. Yeah, because yeah. quality, but he has that type of brilliant technique he could just stroke it around like he's so calm he did one thing in the final where he just took three players out of, out of the game with a torn and kept possession and then we were gone and we were up the stroke game. again yeah. but he's fantastic and he's been brilliant so that's that's what you're looking at it's like the midfield is going to be so competitive next year you've got Finn as well who's been playing right wing back and he's been doing a really good job yeah. but now you've got Reese Marshall coming in to, to, to do a job on him there so Finn like, he's definitely you know, have the best midfield in, in oh, the league the best midfield in years but as well as that, there's a youngster there, Brandon Kavanagh, who I think's a crack a little player, and he only got a little bit part last season. Obviously, yeah. because he's had so many players, the likes of Dylan Watts. I think he was injured for a while. Um, yeah, and the likes of, but he did bad for Ireland the yeah, under 19, didn't he? Um, as well. But where do you fit him in? Where that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what, this, is what, this is what I'm saying. You've got the likes of the first team, but yeah, at least that option's there. If, uh, but from the number 10, the B team star there. But you need, but what I'm saying is, as well, you got. Dylan Watts, Ron Finn will probably be likely more forward next season because yeah. of the likes of Marshall. I'd like to see him more forward there and press more because when, our, when we have Ron Finn higher up the pitch, our pressing game is brilliant because yeah. you can run for days. Him yeah. and Aaron McInerney in particular like too good. When, when, fits when the Finn plays as well, Rovers play really well. Yes. Yeah. Um, one, one player, uh, or two players, sorry, I'd like to talk, to talk to this about. Obviously, Neil Ferrugia, he had been injured. Obviously, you are very excited ahead of Gary O'Neill. Uh, I'm very excited by him, just uh, from the team with the Ireland under 21s as well. He is a very, very good player, and Lee Grace as well. He obviously went on trial to, to Hull, and there was a whole rigmarole. Will really he come back? And the fact that now he's have him and Liam Scales and Pico. So he's actually have the squad definitely improved. I wouldn't say it's the best squad. Like I said, we've trimmed the fight, we've got rid of Constrain, got rid of Ball. Like it's it's the best squad we've had since O'Neill, P- possibly better. I think the only difference from the O'Neill team is lack of a Gary Twig. Yeah. Yeah, like just like it's a big statement, possibly better team. But I mean, if you look at the likes of like even if you look at into when we won the league over here in two thousand and ten under O'Neill, sixty seven points. Yeah. This last last season we finished on seventy five. So, I mean, kind of says a lot really. It's just because the dog were so good. But yeah. yeah. We'll move on. To, we'll talk about predictions in a while, but we're still going through the teams here. We've got Jack Bourne with nine goals, number twenty assists last year. That's 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 Jack. That's what he does. He scores goals. He assists. Like he was the assist king last year. Yeah. And if we can keep him doing that, like I I just can't. I can see us doing it. But I really can yeah. because the squad has gotten so much better now. We've trimmed the fight. We've brought in some really good signings. But much better strength in that. We'll have. I think for you guys, Farouja will be like a totally new signing. He's more than to watch. That's what I thought. Definitely one to watch next season. This is such an exciting player, and from what you hear from in and around the squad and in and around like the, the League of World Circles, is that he's going to go on and do massive things. Yeah, well, sure, he was meant to go to Man City on trial. I don't know if he did it or not. Him he's, he's, oh, he's a brain box as well. He got like 600 points in the league. He's developed like some sort of <laughs> formula to cure some disease or something like that. Like he's, he's wouldn't surprise really intelligent. But he's, and he's an absolute gent as well. Yeah, he he's got so much about him. Like he's got pace. Like my thing about I love, I love having pace and power in my team. And it's something that we never really had on the wings under Bradley. But now with Ferrugia, that's pace, power, and I forgot. He played up top for 20 minutes in the FA Cup final. And he's brilliant, boy. He is what you want to watch. Did he, did, he not, uh, did he not help out with the goal? But, uh, did he not go past Cameron? He, he skins him a couple of times. I don't think he had that to do because Borky put him in for a goal and then he, uh, Green was taken down. But he is definitely the one to watch for me big time next season. I can see him getting out if he stays fit because he was yeah. struggling with his hamstring, wasn't it? Yeah. He was struggling really bad. He had an injury. He was out for, for a while longer than he should have been. 
Um, Love's gone for uh, Love's taking pictures of food with his mat on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't we all? But uh, every time I check the story, it's a it's a picture of the food that they'll enjoy that one anyway. But uh, I, another player, and I know you're you're close with uh, Joey O'Brien, King of Crumlin. Good man. Good man. Oh, I think I think Crumlin is a hot oh, bit of talent. But I, uh, can we just can we just put that in there? The King I, of Crumlin, and Joey O'Brien. If we can keep this guy fit and it's such a good influence on the team and he's probably the coolest person I've ever met he's just such a cool guy and I can see why the team just radiates around him and he's such a good influence on the team I mean he's, he has a lot of pace back, yeah. unbelievable at the back just even the, when he played right back he was very good amazing smart footballer a really really smart footballer such a good influence on the team and essential for us next season in my opinion if we can keep him fit yeah. but I do think that you know it's worth noting Joe O'Brien right um, maybe not as high profile as Damien Delaney when De- Delaney came back all right? yeah. Damien Delaney struggled when he came back big time right? Joey O'Brien's came in and you know he's had injuries and, and so on but when, he, when, on. when he's been in there I genuinely it's like, awesome. even at right back because you go on with uh, sometimes you maybe have to accommodate him to have a right wing back then but sometimes he played the right wing back role and for his age and he's not he's not built for a full back he's built as a centre back yeah. let's be honest um, but I just thought I've seen a lot of Rovers games last season and I did think that he was very very good and yeah. Kira who, who's on who's one of the presenters with himself is a coach and he just went he just loves the way Stephen Bradley operates his in-game management when he changes things up Kira notices all this and brings yeah. it to my answer and I was like wow and I don't think Stephen Bradley maybe gets the credit deserved in terms of what he does in terms of changing formations and stuff like that during the game but he said to me that Joey O'Brien was such a key Fit, uh, factor in that because he can alternate he can go centre back he can play right back he doesn't get up he can play the top he played the top for Drinan when he was yeah, 15 as, 16 as Joey I went on a bit of a spoiler there so. <laughs> as, as Joey said on the on the podcast like he grew up like knowing like what I meant to play for Rovers he grew up supporting Rovers as such so I mean I but think, isn't that nice to hear someone yeah, who's gone out to play Premier League football and like, I think that's what I mean he came back and he wasn't expected to stroll into the league run, which I think Damien Delaney probably did, so, you know, like he probably thought he would still quite well in the league, and um, probably underestimated a bit. Whereas Joe was a complete opposite; he met the challenge head on and it's done really well. Like even when it came down, to, we have a, we have a section called questions from the East End, it's a quiz we had for for the players. World Cup format. How many league have you won? He's he's so competitive. Like he wants to win everything. Like he comes in, let's say it's let's say you have Dylan Watson on the against each other. He'll sit there and he'll be analysing. If you listen to our questions and you'll be like, right, I'm going to hop off him in the next round. Like, he's just so competitive with everything. <laughs> and I think that that's, that mentality has bounced off the whole team. And he's, I'd say, just a great character that had the then There was uh, Sean Callum, Roberto Lopez, Alan Manis and uh, Leon Paz re-signed as well. I think Alan Manis is a, another player who's been really good since he came in. You look, I'm sure he's... Poss- possibly most important sign in the decade. Yeah. The goalkeeper crisis that we... Goalkeeping crisis that we've had for a while. I mean, if you look at we had Highland and then who else? Who are we looking at, Ryan? Tomer. We had Tomer. Horgan. We had Horgan. 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 Horgan, he tried his best. Yeah, he had hearts, you know. Like, like, um, poor, it's, poor fella. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a crisis. It really yeah. was. And it was something that Bradley had to deal with. He dealt, we thought he dealt with it well. And to attempt Alan back... It was a big deal of what was made in the media as well. Huge, like huge. At, at 27 years of age now as well, the guy is a tank, his body's a temple, and he's back next season, which is huge. We don't have to worry about a goalkeeper next year. The core of the squad is still there. We've trimmed the fat. I can't stress that enough, is that this is the happiest I've been with a squad in a long, long time. And you may still add to it. Uh, we, I think we definitely will. Definitely add to it. Yeah. Considering the investment is there now as well. The the Dermot Desmond deal is we know that's that's gone through. I think the transfer window's only open a couple of weeks. So. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I'd like to get the player in now. If yeah. I'm going to do the business, I'd like to get him in now. Get his free season yeah. done, and not have him come in without gelling with the team in that pre season. Do you know what I mean? I'd like yeah. that to get done. Yeah. Just to get it done. Yeah. Do it. And I think with with the uh, Alamanas as well. You, you go back to the cuff when uh, and all that big deal was made and he came out and had to apologise and I kind of felt bad from you uh, I feel like didn't think you had to apologise well, and if you from just kind of you'd know as well Ryan from meeting him and saying hello to him gentleman I'd, I'd say he was 
just mortified to the fact that he, he was just kind of just tore, he just torn and he didn't mean that boy he just like yeah, he's, he's not Irish yeah, yeah, so. like he's, he's like he, I mean, he, he did just straight he respected it he had his head held tight like he didn't he didn't, yeah. didn't bow his head or anything it was just not intentional the story he's like he's a gentleman, he's a gentleman. Now, when I spoke to him at the PFI you know, and I said to him I said Jesus you know I feel bad that the fact that you're getting so much abuse um, I'd and, say he was mortified he even said that to him I'd say he was just like oh fuck no, he was just standing there. He was just being really nice. You know what I mean? But he was standing there, kind of, he was kind of looking around, and he he, he didn't really know where to be looking. Yeah, so yeah. I just went over to him because Jack was there with Pico, and they were talking about something, and I just went over to him, um, and I was just chatting to him or whatever. Nice fella. But uh, anyway, on to Jack. Um, you know, you mentioned his goals and his assists. The thing for you guys, and I think he's about maybe agree, is he's so key to your team can you keep for the full season is the big question that I suppose it depends I mean, everyone from the outside wants to know and then obviously what do you yeah, think if, if you look at Bradley and the way he has moulded this squad I mean he's come in from the get go he signed the players he wanted to he's trimmed the fat he did it himself and it's just if you look at the like of Lopez uh, he said the best season of his life let's be honest it's been amazing and if we can keep Jack, oh, I don't know what it's. It's if if you if it was Bradley now and I got a bid in the middle of let's say June and we were cracking on and we were going for the title, what do you do? What do you that's do? A that's that's yeah. that, that's where you're hanging your crust as a, as a gaffer. Yeah, you know, I was. I remember reading that like he obviously this, he was under contract last season. This season, I heard there's a clause that maybe he can get another year, and I don't know. But if, if that that would be the perfectly ideal scenario, if we could activate that, get him in for next season, like not not the coming season, the season after, like twenty twenty one, and then maybe try and get the full season, and then then kind of t- take any bids because like you know it, it's only inevitable. I think that in June year there'd be clubs coming in from. But again, it depends where we are at the table. But it it could also depend on the playoffs and, and and the Euros too. Yeah, like I mean, like, he might want to go to. Yeah. And you have to look at the duration of his contract as well and his frame of mind. So let's say, for instance, he's got six months left. We, someone comes in with a bid with decent money. He could walk for free, which is the we case. Don't, well, I don't think anybody in the league wants that to be the case. That's the thing. So we might. Maybe Ross fans. But yeah. We, we might come to that situation where, okay, we've got six months left on his contract. We have a bid in here. We have to make a decision, which is, like I said, it's. It's a, it's a decision I wouldn't want to be making. Yeah, yeah. but he, he, you can see by him he loves a good But I do think Jack Burr himself is very influential. I think you'll see a lot more uh, rises in attendance this year because he is in the league. People will want to come and see him, whether it's at Rovers or away away games. I think he is that. I think that they should be doing maybe more to promote the likes of himself and to players with the dock as well. Um, to to advertise the fact that they're there and they're, they're going to be here at this date and so on. I think people could do more in terms of the league in promoting it in that sense. They should be trying to make him the poster boy of Dublin and yeah, you know, with Dan Mandreo for, for Bowes and, and so on. Just things like that. Um, that's just my opinion. This of. is all up to the clubs individually though. This is all up to their media officers and, and whoever else is involved to just kind of pinpoint that and say, okay, this is the guy we're going to promote. This is the guy we want to make an idol for all the kids. And Jack Warren mm. is your man. I mean, he's an outrageous footballer. It's all about bottling that talent and making sure that we can we can use it in the right way. And we have been doing that. So I, I just think, just keep the format the way it was, coming off the back of a cup win this season, going into this now with the best squad we've had. We might as well talk about predictions, will we? Yeah, go on. And then at the end, we're going to chat about the Shamrock Roberts too. So like yeah, that. so predictions, I mean, <laughs> I'd love a double. Obviously, I'd love to win the double. I think it's our best squad we've had in years. If we get in maybe a bit more backup up top, and we keep playing the way we're playing, I think we're in the league. I think we're up there. We're going to be up there. We have to improve our, our performances against Dundalk. We have to start at home in particular. I think one of the stats was one in 15. One win in 15. Oh, what was the prof came out with? Uh, the two games, the eight games against Bowles and Dundalk last season, we picked up four points out of possible 24. <sighs> stat stat man, Ryan. Yeah, stat man, Ryan. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about improving the on that. The only thing is, though, the majority of them games were before the mid-season break. We added to the squad mid-season. Bet Bowles gave Dundalk a good run for the money in the mm-hmm. league. And like the two wins against them in the cup... Well, I think the first win against Bowles was more satisfying. It was a way to play. The we, we, didn't, we didn't even play well on the night. Like, yeah, yeah, but it was just to get the monkey off our back, yeah. you know. And and then obviously when we bet the two 0 out there in the semi final of the cup, it was it was it was fantastic. And we the momentum that came from that was huge. So that's we got the away game now. I mean we've got Bowles on a Saturday at two o'clock, first game of the season. This is huge. 
Huge uh, way to start the season. How do you feel about that being moved? I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm happy enough. The Coppers want their overtime, they're going to get it. I mean, do you know what happens in these games yeah. coming off the pitch? It happens. There's going to be trouble off the pitch. It happens. It's it's part and parcel of the way it is. If they're moving over trouble, I don't think... But I want to know the official reason. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, if this game was at four o'clock in the morning, there'd be trouble out. You yeah, know, that's, that's, that's the thing. Why they ever want to do that the situation? So, like, I mean, they're probably you're looking at a situation now where it could probably, they'll be starting at 11 o'clock that morning, or they won't be finishing until 11 o'clock that night. Yeah. Whereas it would have been maybe at five o'clock until 11 o'clock job. So, I think they probably made it a bit worse for themselves. But again, you, you don't know the ins and outs, but I'd love to know the official reason. I'd love to know the official reason as well. Um, but, like I said, Saturday, it's If you know the official reason, that's <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> get on to us, any insiders. But uh, yeah, my prediction. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we'll give Dundalk a run for the money because I think I had this conversation with a friend about Dundalk's squad and about McGrath and Benson being huge losses, and he doesn't think they were. He thought they were bench players. Whereas I think Benson could possibly get into the role with eleven. Don't think McGrath would because apparently McGrath's better than Jack Bourne, the best player in Ireland, from what we've heard off the Dundalk fans. Yeah, but. I think McGrath and Benson are I've massive heard losses. I've players saying how good McGrath is, to be fair. To yeah. But they're I don't think he's losses And they haven't replaced him. They've got Will Patchen in. They've got, uh, who else? Lee. Lee. But I, like, that's that's two massive losses. And Benson was a thorn in our side for years. He yeah. scored a couple of goals against us. I think it's two huge losses. And I, I, I don't think Dundalk are going to be as good as they, as they have been. That's why I think we're going to go on. I'm going to say... No, I think they're still good. Uh, I think they have a bit more strength uh, well, in, in certain positions. Obviously, use at the midfield lockdown. Yeah. But they've got uh, Hoogan. They've got... Um, Georgia 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 Georgia. Their turnover of goal scorers over the years has been insane as well. Yeah. That's what it means. It, it was, you know they're going to score goals. It's whether Rovers, I suppose, can match them in terms of goal scorers. I, don't think, I think that's the only real We're still area. waiting to replace Gary Twig, aren't we? But yeah. we, we, like I said, 15 goals from Aaron Green last season. I think he can kick on again and do it. Especially after in the league, there's not really that many goal scorers around. Is there? Like, you have to, to get a goal scorer, you're going to just have to kind of look. You're looking at the side of the league, league aren't you? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Or lower leagues of England or, or something like that, you're trying to get players in. Dan Carr has got released by the Mistal. Yeah, right? that was a strange one. Wasn't that sacked though, you heard? Yeah. But listen, you, you, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but I'm going to go for a double. Well, yeah, go it's go it's a big shout there. I'm for already, if you listen to the show, you know that's me. We win every week. Oh, I'm being ambitious. What about yourself? Oh, no, again, like, I mean, like, I don't see any imminent decline in Bulldog or anything like that. I still think they'll be a, a really, really strong side. But I do think that we have improved from the mid season point downwards. Last season, we were very good, we were very consistent. Didn't drop any points from June onwards. Many points, sorry, and winning the cup, great balls around the club. I mean, how many season tickets do we sell? Ah, lots. One thousand seven hundred twenty-five. Nice number, isn't it? Seventeen twenty-five. Seventeen twenty-five. So, uh, <laughs> but now, uh, yeah, no, just like generally, there's a good build, uh, good buzz around the club. Uh, I'd say it will continue on to this season, and I, gen- I do genuinely believe that you know if we can. Again, it's looking at the two the two games against start or the league games against Bows and Dundalk. I mean, four points wasn't enough out of them last season. Obviously, if we, if we can get, if like you're probably looking at tw- if, if if you're probably pushing the twenty mark against them, like that's what you, I think that's what you'll need to yeah. try and win a title. That's a big ask as well. It's a big it? ask, but I mean, probably have to beat them at home and then maybe like I don't think you need results. Just need results, results yeah. yes. But I, I genuinely I don't know. Like I'm not gonna. Put trying to premature predictions like saying we're going to win leagues or whatever, but I do think that if closer we, than last year, oh no, 100% closer. Yeah. And I believe that if we do add maybe that extra striker to the squads and keep everyone together, keep Jack, I genuinely believe that we have a great chance of doing it this yeah. season. Generally, I totally believe. agree with you, yeah. yeah well, I, I, I think for myself, looking if it's, I'd just be happy to see a kind of closer title run, kind of maybe run to the, even the last day of the season, yeah. a bit of excitement towards it. Um, for me, anyway, personally, it's neutral in this aspect, but um. Just on to Shamrock Rovers to them. What what are your what are your thoughts on it? I mean I'll go forth on this one because I think the so many mixed reactions. So I'd like to The get hatred it. is insane towards us. Like I mean, there's a court case today, am I right? Limerick have some sort of um there was a breaking news yesterday about Limerick taking someone to court about um, a little bit ill informed on it, but apparently the it's a, it's in it's in doubt now. But I think that there should be a B team league. And you shouldn't have to pay to go into it. Every team should have it. You need to develop. There's a graveyard there from after 19. So you're going 15, 17, 19s. Let's say those players who don't play well and don't get re-signed for the 19s and they might be a little bit younger and they can still play 19s. 
And what about the ones that are 19 and can't play 19s anymore? Where are they going to go? What if they don't get to a less so senior league so many, so many just drop out of football. It's a graveyard. There's yeah. nowhere for them to play. The A Championship was great. There needs to be a B team league. And do not, you don't have to pay the FEOI to go into it. Just let it be a development league for these young fringe players on the fringes of the fourth team, 17s, 19s, and there you go. That's your competitive men's football for these young men. That's what we're trying to do. I don't know where the hatred is coming from. All we want to be able to do is have our 17s, 19s, and the fringe fourth team players have competitive men's football in a good league. I can understand why, you know, other clubs would be frustrated, but there's no other option for us. Yeah. And we have to do what is... Uh, conducive for us and that's what we want to do we're going to do what's going to benefit us and that's how we shouldn't care about anyone else things and we don't so that's the decision that we want to make we want to put B team in I'm going to be honest we don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks that's no, the yeah, like, I mean, you, you look at clubs who are like getting done for match fix and giving out about the integrity of the league like I mean yeah that's, that's, that's authority that's, is on them like, yeah. Yeah, to, to complain clubs about like that. that who are complaining about it and like Seen some clips. What was the name? We can name a goalkeeper. Can you remember his name? Igor yeah, Albuts. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're looking at. So your teams like that, who are like from the same team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that's what we're talking about. I think it's going to be brilliant for the club. And if the, the only thing in it, it has to be a consistent thing, where hopefully, like Brad's plan for the last few years was to develop the the academy. This is the next step, and hopefully, we keep doing it. And we have these young guys playing at a better, a better level at men's football. Because like Bradley said, Bradley said there's rarely anyone from the 19th that goes into the fourth team. Maybe Trevor Clark, Sean Boyd did it. Back but up. other than that, yeah, like, there's not that many that actually make the step up and start playing football. And this is the medium. This is where you go from 19th into the B team. And they say, okay, this guy has a bit of him. He can get a little, little shot at the fourth team now. So that's what it's all about. Playing on Saturday at 3 o'clock. We're running the bus to the fourth one in Longford as well. 30 names already. Away, just, 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 yeah, that's it. 22nd of February, a bus to Longford, 3 o'clock at the Avenue. If you want to book on, it's uh, you're very welcome to join us. Doesn't clash with the first team either. It doesn't clash with the first team, so it's a uh, kick off half seven on a Saturday. Aiden Price is great away, Harry. Yeah, now again, you just you talk about, I mean, if you're watching the ninth team, there's plenty of good players there who. Like we're probably just maybe another year or two away from first team level, but we're now we're now like remember the A championship that was very handy because that yeah. was up to twenty one, twenty two. So I think I think they got like three registered first teams yeah, as well as well. well. But like I mean, they just drop out of football. They, like unless you again, unless you go down to senior league, they just drop out. Some go to GAA, some just yeah, stop, some stop just stop the likes. Sport, like. I give you a good example, Richie English. Yeah, I don't think I mean he was highly sought after, and I don't think he's even playing anymore. You know, but and he was playing really well for the seventeens and nineteens. I know I don't think he played. He plays GAA, like you said. Yeah. But I think again, you also look at the last time we did the B team, compare Rovers then compared to where we are now. Like the first team wasn't mid table. The crowd probably declined a bit. Uh, we didn't have an academy. The under nineteens weren't as good as they are now. So I mean, no one cared. No one cared. No one cared. Like, I mean, why do they care now? That's the yeah. Thing. But now I think that now that there's better buzz around the club and there's better young talent coming to me I look like Sir Brandon Kavanagh Sean Callan Dean Williams Thompson Lewis just to name them like. is it the fear is it the fear of domination well I think I think is that sound big headed but is it yeah, the fear that we are progressing look uh, as regards to our academy because there is much yeah, progression there, there, progressing there yeah. well, I know Silverware Pats swept the board last year but as regards to progression like, it's all about development I think for, yeah. our, for our academy and developing any, anything, anything, anything else is a bonus yeah when well, you look at Vinnie Perth came out and said that he wants to he is no problem where he wants to done the Dogby team in there but then you had the I think it was the Pats or sorry not Pats sorry Cabo chairman coming out and saying you know he thinks it's unfair because some of the players that may you know I think you as you said about the, the graveyard um, may have played for Cabo but now they're playing the B team I think that's their yeah. argument you know, do you know what I mean to kind of see the two sides of the coin oh, you can as well understand you know? it totally as well but at the end of the day this is all down about the governance of the league and the way it's run and it's not run correctly and there has to be a massive restructuring of it so this is all down to I mean the FAI who need to get their finger out their ass pretty much I mean it's in disarray at the moment it's, it's in bits yep. so that's something that needs to be fixed and I mean I think all the all the the grants that were granted to all the new world clubs that are frozen at the minute so that's all the development frozen as well so I mean the, the structure of the league keeps changing as well it's just something that we need we need a, a coup a brand new structure in there and just people who really care about the league giving it structure that are at the top of the yeah and that's and, and, and know what they're talking about not just somebody who's in the FAO for maybe 20 years 
and is told, okay, here, your baby is the League of Ireland this year, do something with I think it. the biggest issue is the fact that you just had to have a league to be able to have a national team. I think that's the way they, it was yeah. just kind of like that. You know what I mean? And just again, you just remember in terms of, I uh, said this off camera as well, but in terms of supports, in terms of the first division, I mean, okay, Shells brought chocolate supports. You'd imagine, yeah, you'd imagine, got, they obviously get back in the Premier League, you'd imagine got Galway, Longford, Bray maybe would bring a busload of fans with them. But other than that, who travels in the first division well? Yeah. Like, I mean, we, we will, like, once it doesn't clash with the first team this time around. It's usually, it would be on Sundays, wouldn't it? Um, if Rob was playing for, I think it's No, it's, it's on Saturday. Isn't Our it? home games would be on Saturday. But we're Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, 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 Saturday. Yeah, this time around. And I suppose it's better because it wouldn't clash with Super Sunday either. But um, again, you mentioned going to Longford, there'd be a big crowd down there for that one. They were playing. Cabo away on the Friday and Sligo away on the Saturday the first team so again you'll get a good crowd down the yeah. sharp book at that Cove so. away is going to be a big one as well yeah. it's going to be a nostalgic trip for us yeah. back to where we won the first but also, again, if clubs like I don't know but it's easier said than done it's easy to look at it from the outside but if clubs could like arrange their, their games against Rovers B or Rovers 2 whatever you want to call it on just once it doesn't clash with the first team I'd say you get a good Rovers form yeah. you know, especially if like Spray like, because you know, they have to think about revenue let's be honest yeah. that's what it is but a lot of them are saying that they're going to boycott the games as well <laughs> Like, do you think about it? Teams won't even walk off a pitch when a player's racially abused, and you think they're going to boycott a game because Rovers will beat them. Well, would you rather, like, I mean, not going to happen. They're playing in Tallis Stadium as well. Like, not going to happen. These lads are going to want to play. They're going to be in, they're going to be the eyes on them. There's no way these these players are all going to come together and say, we're boycotting this because and I said, like, Rovers have a beat team. They feel that strongly about it. I saw this on uh, Twitter or something the other day. Like, I mean, if you're. If you're gonna, but if like say if a fourth division club supporters are gonna boycott Tallinn, like, I mean, how many of them are gonna boycott? Like, is there, is there <laughs> many to, to kind of there you go. Well, I do think it was a good point to say to see someone uh, put it up as well uh, online somewhere, or it's a heard it. But the fact that they're gonna be coming to probably the best ground in the League of Ireland, the best facilities, like these first division players or young players, um, and, and getting to see how professional. Um, stadium is rolling and playing in a professional environment with the change rooms I've been in the change rooms yeah. and they're very professional um, whereas you know you could be in a uh, a part of cabin somewhere basically yeah in the, that back arse and the whole so. basically so I think that would be a big thing in terms of that for, for them but overall you're you are fairly happy you, you, you're looking at a double quarter yeah. Gary yeah, just, just want that main just want to be closer and I think we will be closing the gap. I, th- I, I, no, well, I think we, we, again, if we add that, that extra striker, I think we'll actually. Do you know what? I'll go with the quadruple. We'll go with the B team <laughs> league as well. President's president's cup. And the president's cup. Why not? And you know, show it all in. Yeah. Nice to see you. Cup as well. Sports. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, well, I just want to say a huge thanks for for coming on, Ryan. Um, make sure you check Ryan out on. Social media, I'll have his handle underneath his name. And uh, Gary, you want to plug a couple of things yeah, there before um, we finish up? Uh, a good hoop passed recently, so we've Jay O'Grady and we've a hike for him on the 1st of February. So we're going to start. We've Cabo that day in Afrenia at 11 a.m. Tala, in Tala Stadium. We've a bus leaving at 1 up to the Blue Light, and we're going to hike all around the mountains, then back down for a couple of points in the celebration of his life. And if you want to donate, we can, we'll can. We'll put some info up. So that's the hike for Jay O'Grady. And I'm going to plug our next show for Tales of the East Sound. It's in Crew Tattoo Studio, so it's something a little bit different. In where, our wisdom, where is that? It's in Temple Bar, so Crew Tattoo Parlor. In our wisdom, when we won the cup, we all decided that we are going to get a couple of tattoos, so we said we'd make a show out of it. So it's going to be a live tattoo podcast show where we're going to be getting the tattoo live on air, so there's five or six of us, so I'll be... I don't think it makes much sense to get a tattoo while you're doing the show, so I'll, I'll do it briefly. I'm not going to get the whole show while I'm getting a tattoo, but there's a gang of us getting cup tattoos because we won 25th cup, big, big occasion. So that's going to be this coming Saturday, and um, we'll let you know when it comes out, when it's all good to go and ready to go. So that's it. Well, right, uh, make sure you check out Tales of the East End as well. Um, the lads, as I say, uh, do great work for the club, especially if you're a Robles fan. If you're a Bulls fan, you probably won't enjoy it, but uh, I suppose. Um, other people just check them out anyway they do great work Ryan does great work as well on match day um, if you like this video drop a like on the video subscribe if you haven't already and uh, we'll be sure to speak to you soon thanks for watching